Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'm discussing my thoughts on episode 7 of the anime series Megalobox. And I found this episode to be hella, hella intriguing um, with the whole aspect of focusing on Gearless Joe's opposition in the form of the Shirato group. And respectively, all of the infighting that's going on therein with Yukiko, the figurehead, and her, I, I guess, slightly older brother, Mikio, who is the fighter that we see toward the early portion of the episode, laying waste to his opponent in what is supposed to be, for all intents and purposes, the final notch as far as his entrance into Megalonia. It's a foregone conclusion that this early match in the episode is going to secure him as the third and final entrant into Megalonia. But then, of course, he does this calling out of Gearless Joe he wants to have at Joe. But it's all kind of just posturing. It's all kind of, you know, just flexing one's nuts, if you will, um, in in the infighting game that's going on between Yukiko and, and Mikio. She does not want him to partake in Megalonia at all. She doesn't want anything to jeopardize all of, of the building up that she has put into Yuri. Whether or not there's any sort of romantic relationship between she and Yuri, Yuri is, is where all of her attention lies, all of her focus lies. And he's got to be the one to carry out her sort of grand design in, in Megalonia. He's got to be the tried and true winner. And, and there can't be any sort of mitigating circumstances. There can't be anything running interference. And Mikio is completely on to all of this. <laughs> you know, um, he isn't the dunce cap that, you know, you might first assume in the idea that he's in the ring, he is fighting, he's got the, the gear that has the AI uh, equipped to it, so like he doesn't even have to do much of the fighting on, on his own, you know? He's got so much backup, it's like he, there's not a hell of a lot of brain power coming out of Mikio. But we see actually he is pretty cold and, and, and you know, uh, he, he's got this tacticianary sort of mentality where he's perceived, he's been able to pick up on what exactly Yukiko ha has been doing, what she's been setting up, the way she's been positioning Yuri and everything like that. Um, and it's kind of falling back on the haunches of that, oh, mom and dad always liked you best, or, or in this case, grandpappy always liked you best. And, you know, a sibling rivalry of a sort, um, you know, where, where there's jealousy on Mikio's part that you could go, he was, you know, it's kind of like the Fredo thing from the Godfather. He was passed over to become the leader, the figurehead of Shadata group, you know, uh, and, and he's understandably ticked off about that. And so this has kind of, you know, pitted him uh, head to head against his own sister within their own company. And, and you know, sort of everyone who's going to be involved in the fallout from that is Gearless Joe, is Yuri and everything. You know, like they're the ones who are the through line. They're the ones that we all want to see going up against each other and... and <laughs> Here in this, in the midst of of everything revealed in this episode, uh, you know, within the Shirato group, we have a brother and sister who are vying for power, and and you know, basically <laughs> risking, running the gamut of risk to keep these two opposition forces from ever going anywhere near each other. You know, uh, they they've built this whole match up between Mikio and, and Joe and, and people have been getting tattoos of Joe and there are billboards of him, magazine articles celebrating him. He is the hottest ticket, you know? And, and of course, Mikio knows this. He knows he's going to wipe everyone's nose in it and, and, and utilize that and exploit that. But then he comes crashing down. The other leg drops at the end of the episode with this cliffhanger that might as well have been a sock to the viewer's jaw. Where he's like, look, <laughs> you're not getting in the ring. You're never going to you're never going to deliver yourself. You're never going to, you know, come to fruition with this. There is no end game for you. This is the end game now where where something stops you from ever getting in the ring because I need the sure shot. I, nothing can interfere with my plans, with my positioning, with my vying of power. This power battle between my sister and I, even if, you know, Pops and, and Sachio and Joe, they don't know all of the details of this. They know enough that Mikio set them up for their own downfall. And I got to tell you, I was shocked 
to high hell <laughs> that Pops comes over and he and he kind of sucker punches Joe where he knows he's hurting still, even at this late stage. We saw him all bruised and everything from his previous fight. You know, it got pretty bad with Adagaki and, and he's still got bruises all over the place and you know there is some time that transpires during this episode where he is training and uh, he's been pulling the huge tire behind him with all Sachio's little friends and everything sitting on it to add the weight to build up his muscles so his punches pack a thorough punch but what good is any of this if he can't get in the ring if he's been postured to the point where he's a no-show giving Mikio the win by default, completely undermining Yukiko's plans. Those doors slam home. And it was like, whoa, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> What's happening? What's going to happen? What's going to happen next? Um, I, I started to think, oh, what, what is it going to be like uh, early into the next episode? You know, Yuri, he, he's been backstage the whole time. And he's the one who, like, opens the door again and ushers Joe and, and you know, Satyo and Pops back to the ringside or out to the ringside in the first place. And is like, uh, excuse me, somebody shut the door on these guys before they could come out to the ring. And, and you know, everyone's laughing it up that Mikio had his ass handed to him. And then we're going to have the fight of the century because Mikio has all that A. AI backing. He doesn't need to do so much uh, thinking in in the moment, you know. Um, there is not a lot of forethought on his part. It's mostly his gear doing the work for him. And if Joe's going in there with nothing, with with gear all but absent, you know, like I hope. <laughs> He packs a wallop. I hope if he has to actually go up against Mikio, he lands some hardcore punches home, because that's about the only way he is going to get through whatever matchup he has with Mikio at this point. Um, and so it, it was just like, wow, man. Uh, you know, I, I said once before, I forget what episode it was, but I had said, you know, the story sort of structure, the, the pacing of it, the whole plot line was very reminiscent of something from the 80s, like out of Scarface or something like that, uh, the Al Pacino flick. And and this episode with the infighting, that Godfather-esque infighting between siblings, Yukiko and Mikio respectively, added so much more depth and weight to this. And and it's it's about time. It was pitch perfect timing because if if they are the end game, if they're, you know, going to play a part in that, whether it's, you know, Yukiko and Mikio or Yukiko and Yuri against Joe and, and such like that, you know, we needed to know more. And this was no more perfect timing to give us that influx of information, to show us that, oh, crap, there are a lot of machinations going on behind the scenes and and they are pretty tantamount. They are pretty heavyweight things <laughs> that are moving and shaking behind the scenes right now. Um, jeopardizing, all but jeopardizing, the fate of Megalonia in general, the fate of the Shadato group, the fate of Joe's ever having anything to do with it, whether or not he's ever going to go up against Yuri and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it all hangs in the balance. With this one single episode, tipping on its tear, you know, and uh, so... I was pretty damned riveted, in case you haven't been able to tell already. <laughs> so, until the next one, that'll be pretty much it for me on this one. This video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.